Hello everyone. Welcome to First Online University, a global platform for all your education and growth related needs. In this lecture, we are going to continue with the chapter P block element. We have completed everything that was important in group 13 and group 14. So the conceptual part, the theoretical part, etc. is over. Now we are going to take up previous year questions from group 14 elements. And most of the topics we've already discussed and we'll not be going into details of each and every question, especially the questions that we've already covered in the form of lectures and topics. I'll not be going into details of them. I'll not be spending much time on them. And there might be some questions which we haven't really taken up in the form of lectures or concepts. But since they have been uh, asked in the uh, previous years, therefore, we'll be covering them here in this particular lecture and we'll be like, covering the previous year questions from book 14 elements in two lectures okay this and the next lecture so before we begin a piece of information for you you can use the coupon codes mission j or mission need while you enroll at first online university for mission j or need in order to avail good discounts let us begin with part one of previous year questions the first question is the gas which is evolved on heating calcium fluoride and silica with concentrated H2SO4 on hydrolysis gives a white gelatinous precipitate. The precipitate is, so first of all you need to know what is the gas that is evolved and secondly, uh, so once you know the gas evolved, you will be knowing what is the precipitate that is formed. So it's a pretty simple question. We know silica we have recently studied and similarly calcium fluoride when they are going to react with concentrated uh, sulfuric acid. What we get is uh, the white gelatinous precipitate of silicic acid. Then example of a 3D silicate, zeolites, ultramarines, feldspar, beryls. We have seen that it is zeolites. Uh, sorry, beryls. Okay. So here, uh, the structure of beryls is not given to you. I would just suggest to you, zeolites we have seen, it's not a three-dimensional structure. It is just sil uh, Si4 plus being replaced by Al3 plus. I would suggest you to, I, I don't know, I had included that uh, um, structure, three-dimensional structure of beryls, but go uh, to Google, search for the structure of beryls, and once you see that three-dimensional structure, you will not forget it in the examination, okay? So, beryls is something that we haven't really discussed in the lectures, but just have a look at the structure, okay? This is important. Next is, amongst the following, identify the species with an atom in plus six oxidation state. So, manganese um, here, see, um, let's take the oxidation state <coughs> for the metal to be equal to x and so it's going to be x plus minus 2 into 4 so x minus 8 is equal to minus 1 so x is plus 7 so no then chromium cn6 uh, here chromium is in plus 3 oxidation state here chromium is in plus 6 oxidation state uh no wait it is not in plus 6 oxidation state in option number 3 so it's like uh, 2x minus 6 is equals to 0 so 2x is equals to plus 6 as x is equals to plus 3 and the last one we have x minus 4 minus 2 so x is equals to plus 6 so here in option 4 chromium is present in plus 6 oxidation state next question is which one of the following elements reacts with steam germanium silicon tin and carbon we have seen that it is tin that reacts uh, okay we have not, not really seen tin as of now but tin is the element that is going to react to its steam. So that's another information based question for you. Next question is the major product formed when 111 trichloropropane, draw the structure, is treated with aqueous KOH. So that's like uh, a question which is not particularly from this particular topic that is group 14 elements. <coughs> but it is important to uh, from organic chemistry point of view itself. So what happens when 111 trichloropropane reacts with aqueous KOH? So you will get propionic acid. That's again <coughs> an information-based question for you. Next question is which of the following exists as covalent crystals in solid state? This was asked in J mains in 2013 iodine, silicon, sulfur or phosphorus. So which of them is existing as covalent crystals in the solid state? So in the solid state, we will have silicon that we've already seen. 
Next question is identify the incorrect statement in SI3 O96 minus tetrahedral SI4 units share two oxygen atoms. See, two oxygen atoms being shared means we are not talking about pyro silicates. So remember that. Then trialkyl chlorosilane on hydrolysis gives R3 SiOH. Then SiCl4 undergoes hydrolysis to give <coughs> H4 Si. O4. Next statement is Si3O96 uh, minus has a cyclic structure. So we have already done the formulae for cyclic, pyro, etc. So on the basis of that, you should be able to identify the incorrect statement, which is option two here. That is trialkyl chlorosilane on hydrolysis will not yield R3SiOH. Next question is how many corners of SiO4 unit are shared in the formation of 3D silicates? 3, 2, 4 or 1. We have seen it is when it is forming 3D silicates, it is 4 corners being shared. So option 3 is the correct answer. Next question is the assertion is GEF4 and SiCl4 act as Lewy spaces. The reason is germanium and silicon have d orbitals to accept electrons. So you have to tell whether both are correct and R is the correct explanation of A. Both A and R are correct but R is not the correct explanation of A. A is true, R is false, R is true, A is false. These are the various options. Now, let us look at the assertion first. When we talk about germanium and uh, silicon, uh, fluoride and chloride respectively, what do we see is they act as Lewis spaces. Now, that's false. They do not act as Lewis spaces. Yes, the reason that they have the orbitals to accept electrons is correct, but Assertion itself is incorrect and therefore we cannot go on to finding whether R is the correct explanation of A or not. Okay, A is false, R is true. So option 4 is the correct answer. Okay, you got the answer beforehand. Next question is, the catenation tendency of carbon, silicon and germanium is in the order. First carbon, then silicon, then germanium. The bond energies of these bonds are therefore respectively. So it's like... Uh, when we look for the bond energy, so wherever you will have more catenation tendency, the bond energy is going to be higher. And therefore, when we look at first the CC, then SISI, then GEGE, -GE, so it has to go in a decreasing manner, decreasing order. So therefore, option A is the correct answer because it's going in a decreasing order. I've told you the concept behind. Next question is the reaction that gives carbon dioxide as one of the products, carbon plus HNO3, NaOH plus carbon, SNO2 plus carbon, Fe2O3 plus carbon. We have seen these reactions and one of the products, CO2 being one of the products is only for option one, that is carbon with HNO3. That will give me carbon dioxide. So option A is the correct answer. We have already studied this reaction. Next is what is the empirical formula of sheet silicates? We have already discussed, so I'm not going into details of it. It is Si. 2O5N, 2N minus, okay? And even if we have not discussed in this particular format, I think we have discussed. Please get this uh, uh, formula into your brains. It is very, very important. Next is extraction of metal from the ore cast to right involves carbon reduction of an oxide ore, self-reduction of a sulfide ore, Removal of copper impurity or removal of iron impurity. So metal uh, extraction we have not talked about in this particular chapter. But in the metallurgy chapter we have discussed this part. So if you want to find out um, the explanation to it you can refer to that chapter. But right now uh, what I would just tell you is that here the correct answer would be option number one. That is carbon reduction of an oxide ore. So castorite is an oxide ore. And the reduction of the oxide ore in order to get the metal from it, that is removal of oxygen from it, uh, by using carbon as the reducing agent, in order to get the metal, that is the process that we follow. And also for the removal of iron impurity, so both the options are correct. Next is producer gas is a mixture of, we have already seen that it is CO plus N2, option 1 is the correct answer. Moving on to the next question, dry ice is CO2, uh, sorry, um, yeah, solid CO2. So option 2 is the correct answer. These are very simple questions. We need not be going into details of it. 
Next is in feldspar and zeolite, Si4 plus ions are replaced by oxide ion, hydroxide ion, aluminum ion or potassium ion. Even if you do not know about feldspar, you know about zeolite that Si4 plus ions are replaced by Al3 plus ions. So option 3 that is aluminum ions is the correct answer. Next question is what product is formed on heating lead nitrate to so PbNO3 when it is heated? What do we get is we get PbO plus NO2 plus O2. Okay, even if we have not discussed about lead, see the rest of the uh, three elements uh, after carbon, silicon, germanium, tin and lead we have not discussed because you know not much questions are asked on them. So whatever questions are asked or have been asked, I have taken them in these last two lectures for group 14 and therefore you can actually you know make notes out of these questions itself. Next question is, among the following substituted silanes, the one which will give rise to cross-linked silicon polymer on hydrolysis. We have discussed this part as well. It is R-SiCl3 that is going to give rise to a cross-linked silicon polymer. So option two is the correct answer. Next question is, identify B in the following reaction. So when we have H2SiO4, that is like SiO4 2 minus, uh, when water is lost at 1000 degree centigrade, we get A, which on reduction with carbon and heating, we get carbon monoxide and a product B, which is carburetum, voids, kisselgar or sandstone. We have not directly studied this reaction, but it is, it is one of the methods of preparation of carburetum, which is uh, like another uh, form of, or you can say allotrope of silica. silica okay. So option one is the correct answer. This is an important reaction. You can jot it down in your notes. Next is hydrolysis of SiCl4 gives a compound X and HCl. And on heating to 1000 degrees centigrade, S, uh, X is going to lose water and form Y. Now you have to tell what is X and what is Y. So we have already seen that it is a hydro um, silicate that is going to be formed that is H2SiO4 and that on losing water is going to form Y that is SiO2 silica. So option one is the correct answer. Next question is white lead is again an information based question jot it down in your uh, notes. It is PbOH whole twice and a combination of lead hydroxide and lead carbonate. So option three is the correct answer. Next question is which of the following oxides is amphoteric in nature that is it behaves as both acidic as well as basic so this is something which we have already discussed that is option one tin oxide is the right answer. Next question is roasted tin stone ore after washing with water is known as what again an important question you can note it down in your notes that is called black tin option three is the correct answer. Next question is a fibrous mineral which can withstand red hot flames without any damage. Tail, glass wool, soapstone, uh, asbestos. So asbestos is, an, is, is a mineral of uh, silica. So that's the correct answer. Option 4. Next question is the stability of dihalides of silicon, germanium, tin and lead increases steadily in what sequence? So is it like from silicon to lead it decreases or option 2 or 3 or 4? Again, it's a, it's an important question. I think we have discussed it. If we have not, please note this down in your notes. It is option 4. That is from silicon to germanium to tin to lead. It goes on increasing. The stability goes on increasing down the group of that of dihalides. Because down the group, yes, we have discussed this. Down the group, plus 2 oxidation state becomes more stable. So till question number 25, we have already covered in this lecture. From question 26 onwards, we are going to take up in the next lecture. Although, uh, see, uh, such questions are simple one word questions. No explanations are required for them. These are all memory based questions. And therefore, I'm not giving you, you know, detailed solutions of it. Because we have either covered that in the lectures before. Or these are information based questions, one liners that you have to note down in your notes. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel for joining YouTube Live classes for best NEET or JE coaching. You can also download the first online university mobile app through Google Play Store or App Store for continuous learning through your smartphones. Keep learning with first online university.
a team of millions of learners and educators worldwide.